composition. What is composition? Well, it's a collection of something put together in a pleasing way. It could be a collection of musical notes, um, all the same notes, but depends how you put them together, it makes for an interesting composition and an interesting tune. And it's the same with painting. I want to take you right back to the old masters. Um, the classical uh, composition is a golden triangle in a lot of the ways. Um, you have this composition here, for example. You see how the models form this nice triangular piece, which is very pleasing to the eye. You also have, if you look at it, a similar thing here. A triangle forming that way and then a triangle forming that way. So it's a question of getting things to look pleasing. This composition here, okay, this is um, a portrait and still life, you can see how we have a sort of triangle there as well. And likewise with this Vermeer, although the lady in the portrait is almost in the middle, she's set at a slight angle and in the foreground you've got the still life the subject of, of what she's dealing with. The, one of the most important things about composition when you're putting together a picture, let us say we are doing one that is landscape, is you do not want to cut your painting or your composition into quarters, into halves like that. The better way of looking at it is to think of it as in six, okay? Thirds, thirds, thirds. This is a better way of balancing something. So composition is a question of how you put things together. When you're looking at doing a painting, whether you're working from a still life or from a photograph, try and start with the end in mind. In other words, envisage it mounted, framed, on the wall, how will it look? You have to ask yourself, what's my motivation for painting that picture? For example, I always do a lot of little sketches. Little thumbnails, we call them. Say I'm working on a still life, okay? It's the vase of flowers. Well, you could have it plonk right in the middle of your portrait shape, or you could say, well, I think I'll have a bit of the vase there and then lots of flowers. So what you're effectively doing is you're zooming in with your eye to take that section, that bit there, because you might in fact saying to yourself your reason for painting this jug of flowers, this bowl of flowers, are the colours of some particular flowers. So you could say, well I particularly like the colour of that one there, so I want to make sure I make that as big as possible. You might also be thinking about looking down on something. And there's the the jug and you're looking down on it like that. So if you're taking photographs it's all a question of how you take your photograph don't you? You zoom in or you pick something that is the most interesting area for you. So you want to think what is my motivation for painting this picture? An example here, this is one of my other courses, one of my lands, it's my landscape course. Let me just zoom out so you can see a bit better. This painting here, okay, I did it for the landscape course, but my motivation for doing it was because of the big sky. This is going towards the coastline where I live and the um, terrain gets flatter and flatter and it's all vineyards. And I wanted to get across my feeling, my enjoyment to the viewer of this very big sky. So I dropped my horizon right down, even possibly as far as a quarter. It's about a third, okay? So you've got to think, what's your motivation 
what's the most interesting aspect of the subject matter why are you painting it and make that part of your decisions about your composition this one here this one is this little buddha it's actually in the garden of um, where I hold my painting holidays and I could have come at this from lots of different angles because I have pictures of it looking that way and looking that way but what I wanted was to make the lovely round shapes of him the important bit but also the bright light of the landscape behind so what I've done is I've zoomed in and I'm making these areas really dark and then very very light behind so whenever you're planning your composition just keep thinking about what is it that is the most important thing to me about this subject and how can I make it interesting and also when you're looking at your subject matter you can sort of mark off the areas okay it helps you see a little bit better how you're looking at things take a piece of paper or a piece of mounting board something like that and play around with it play around with how you want it to look so composition yes you could have something plonk in the middle let's go back to that little sketch here okay Plonk in the middle, okay, very pleasing, could be well executed, but it's not very exciting, is it? So by zooming in there, you have, um, you're drawing the viewer in to say, look at these colours, look at these shapes. You could also, if you're going still with the portrait, you could have it a bit off centre. Say you've got some nice shadows behind there, it's casting shadows, you could say, Okay, there it is there. I'm going to take it right to the side and I might have a few dropped petals there. Maybe you want to make it landscape and you want the shadow. The shadow might be the most important thing to you. And you're going to have long shadows there. Probably too far over, we'll see. So just think about what you're doing. Start with the end in mind. And I really, really can't emphasize enough that this is probably, it's one of the most important stages. It's the first stage of your painting, the planning. It's 99% of the job. Do little sketches. Think about what you're doing. Start planning ahead, your colors, your shapes. How is it going to look? What is going to make the subject that first engaged you enough to paint it engaging to the viewer.